Hi Church, so good to be back with you all again. Tonight will be my final session with you, at least for this season. I want to thank all of you and those of you who have logged in uh, week after week, and I really hope that you have benefited from all these sessions as I have enjoyed really presenting it to you. Tomorrow, we're going to close our 40 days of fast and pray and uh, do log in, 8.30, it's going to be a closing service and we're going to have communion together and uh, the whole service will be anchored by our young pastors. Um, well, I, I just want to say that during these 40 days, I believe that God has done a deep work in most of you, if not all of you. Certainly, it has done something very, very deep in me. But I want to encourage you that whatever God has spoken to you about in the last few weeks, whatever God has birthed inside of you, nurture it, carry it, cradle it, develop it, grow it, and then birth it. I'm going to share with you today in this closing session on the birthing of God's vision taken from Luke chapter 1 when the archangel Gabriel announced to Mary that she's going to bear a child, Jesus. And the conception inside her is truly of God. And I'm going to take from this passage of scripture, how do we know that whatever God has birthed inside you, inside of me, in the last five to six weeks, is truly of God? Let me read. Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to verse 38. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favoured. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will never end. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you and so the Holy One to be born will be called, wow, the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she was said to be barren in her, is now in her sixth month, and it's very important. Verse 37 For nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her the birthing of God's vision. Let, let, let me begin with a story. And I, I love delivery stories, as you know. Many of you know that I was an obstetrician and gynecologist for over 25 years before I became a full-time pastor. There were five fathers waiting in the waiting room of the labor ward, waiting for their wives to be delivered, to deliver their child. And then the nurse came in spoke to the first father. Sir, what do you do? Where, where do you work? I work in One World Hotel. Whoa, you got a son! Oh, the father was so happy. 
ran into the labor room to congratulate, congratulate the wife. Few minutes later, the same nurse came out, spoke to the second father. Sir, where do you work? I work in two concepts. You got twins! And so the father was so happy, ran into the labor room. Few minutes later, the same nurse came out, spoke to the third father. Where do you work, sir? 3M. You got triplets! Wow! And then they came out again the fourth time, spoke to the fourth father. Where do you work, sir? Four seasons. Amazingly, you got quadruplets. Wow. And a few minutes later, the same nurse came out. The face was so pale. Ask the father, fifth one, where do you work, sir? I work in 7-Eleven. The nurse fainted. Coming back to this passage, how do I know that this vision is birthed from God? And then we're going to share later on. If I know that this is from God, how do I respond? What is the posture? So, so let me share with you now from this passage, how do I know that the vision or the burden, or the desire, the prompting, even the last 40 days of prayer and fasting that God has embedded in my spirit man is from God. There are three characteristics. Number one, if that desire, that something that God has started and birthed and planted in your spirit man over these few weeks is from God, it will be holy. In other words, set apart, kadosh. It will be set apart. That's what it happens here, verse 35. The Holy Spirit, angel Gabriel said to Mary, will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And whatever that is birthed inside you, Mary, is holy. In other words, set apart for God's purposes. If that something that is birthed inside you is from God, you know something? The Holy Spirit Himself in the coming days will continue to affirm you, continue to confirm inside you, and not only that, continue to lead you, guide you step by step so that it will come to fruition. Why? Because it's birthed by God. And God, and what God starts, He will complete. In other words, Aya, you will know what to do. You will know what to do. The most important thing for you, my friend, is don't grieve the Holy Spirit. And you know it inside of you because the Holy Spirit lives inside you and He will tell you what to do and how to do it. Not only that, how do I know that this is of God? Amazingly, my friend, listen to me very carefully, taking from the cue here. You will be highly favoured. That's what happened to Mary. You are highly favoured. In other words, whatever that is birthed from God will have the favour of God. Would you meet opposition? Of course. Will there be difficulties? Of course. Will there be obstacles? Of course. But because the favour of God is with you, you will overcome. That's exactly what happened here. The favour of God, you are highly favoured. Greetings to you. And then the angel said, do not be afraid. You have found favour with God. But you ask me, Pastor, favour? What is favour? No, I shared this with you in one of my previous sessions of Chew on the Word when I shared with you on the Noahic covenantal blessing. Genesis chapter 18 verse 3 tells us what the favour of God is because the law first mentioned. Abraham said to the three visitors, which is a theophany, if I have found favour with you, stay. Don't go away. Stay. In other words, God, if I have found favour with you, let your presence 
stay with me. So what will happen is this: if that is something birthed by God, whatever, whatever it is, nothing big, but you know it. God wants you to do something. After these forty days of consecrating yourself to God, God has given you a burden, a desire to continue, maybe to to seek Him, to do something. I don't know what to draw closer to Him. But this is of God, and the resident presence of God will be with you. It may even be something you think impossible. But remember what God says in verse thirty-seven: Nothing is impossible with God. God will make sure that His favor will be upon you. Look, God's vision done, or God's plan done in God's ways, will not lack God's provision. God will provide. Amen. Don't allow it to to be aborted prematurely, my friend. Don't do that. Continue. In the next. Weeks and months of your life. Don't let the forty days after fast finish fasting, then go back to your old self. Don't do that. Whatever God has deposited in your spirit, birth in you. Continue. The Holy Spirit will affirm you. The favor of God will be upon you. Wow. And the third characteristic is this. Listen to me very carefully. Whatever it is, the blessing of God. It's never for you personally alone. Always it is to bless others, one. Always it is to bless others. God loves to bless you, my friend. But you and I are blessed to be a blessing, like Mary. So whatever that God has birthed inside us, we will be blessed. Yes. Remember the the difference I gave bef- to you before between a blessing and blessedness. A blessing is a one-off event. Blessedness is a state, a condition. A blessing comes and goes. Wait for the next blessing, but a blessedness stays. A blessing is a vit- visitation from God. Blessedness is a habitation of God. Wow. And God will give you. Blessedness, so that blessing after blessing will be unleashed to you and through you. Let me give you an example. In the year two thousand and eight, when Pastor Lee Chu and I was in the mountain seeking God, and I do that every year, God spoke to me very, very clearly. Go big time into Sabah. It's not that we were not investing or ministering to Sabah, but now focus on Sabah. Why I don't know, but I knew that that was the appointed time. That was the Kairos moment, and if God says move, we move. And so we went into Sabah big time, supporting the pastors, supporting the Bible schools, the young people, training them in apologetics. Supporting the evangelists and so on and so forth. 2014, the Lord says, "Now enter Sarawak. Whoa, move into Sarawak." And you know that this vision is birthed by God, is from God. Why? Because all the way in the last 11, 12 years, God has led us all the way to East Malaysia. It was a vision that was highly favored. We lacked nothing. And over the last eleven, twelve years, we have seen so many pastors trained, equipped. We have seen hundreds of churches grown, planted. We have seen hundreds, if not thousands, of young people trained in apologetics. We have seen literally uh, 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 many, many blessings. Evangelists sent out into unreached kampongs and villages in the interior. An amazing thing was it was culminated in in rallies, in in Kota Kinabalu, in Kudat, in Ranau, in、uh, in in Kaningau, and last year we had a mega mega rally in Kuching where almost fifty thousand people came. An amazing thing was church leaders, Catholic bishop, 
Methodist head, the, the SIB head, the, the, the Anglican bishop and AOG leaders all came together. Whoa! You see, where there's unity, God commands His blessing. It all started from a vision birthed by God. Same for you, my friend. I want to believe that during these 40 days, don't waste it. Whatever God has put in your spirit, man, maybe in the next few days, just ask God, God, what do you want me to do? How should I now carry on after we finish and close these 40 days? Surely it cannot be the end. I don't know what God has spoken to you, my friend. Do it. Because if it is birthed by God, God will provide. And the favour of God will be upon you, your work, your family. What then should be our posture then, Pastor? Let me take the cue from Mary. Only one Posture is needed from you. Surrender. Surrender. Yield totally. Wow. Let me track Mary's response with you in four movements. Verse 26 to 29, when the angel greeted Mary and announced to her, that whatever is conceived inside her womb is holy. She said, Who? Me? Who? Me? Understand, please, so. And in verse 20, 34, it went on to the second movement. How will this be? How? Me? And then it went on from verse 35 onwards. Why me? Why me? I still don't understand, Lord. I still don't understand. But we don't have to understand, you know. All we need to do is to trust. Why? Because nothing is impossible with God. You know something, my friend, can I encourage you? We will always be limited. We will always be inadequate. We will always be have shortcomings. But in the midst of our limitations, in the midst of our inadequacy, in the midst of our shortcomings, God is able, ma. God can, ma. We can't, God can. Trust Him. And this is the fourth movement. Verse 38. From who, me? How, me? Why, me to yes, Lord, me. Yes, Lord, me. Verse 38, I am the Lord's servant. The KGV says, I am the Lord's born slave. I'm not my own. I'm bought with a price. May it be to me, as you have said, KGV says, be it unto me according to your word. There was a total surrender, total yielding. Can I encourage you, my friend? In the last 40 days, I want to believe that God has deposited something in your spirit, man a closer intimacy with Him, a, a deeper desire as some of you, night after night, join into our prayer altars. Surely, something must have been birthed inside you. Don't abort it. Don't just stop it just because we stopped the 40 days. No! Nurture it, my friend. Cradle it. Grow it. Carry it and deliver it one day for the glory of God. You know, there is a contemporary Christmas carol called Mary, did you know? Uh, how many of you know this? Raise your hands. Yeah, yeah, I see your hands. You know, I, I love that carol so much. You know, the best way to sing that carol actually is to have a lady with a... Not, not any lady, a lady with a beautiful voice. You know what I mean? Uh, not strumming the guitar. What do you call that? 
plugging the guitar, plugging the, the, the strings, and with the light shining on her, and she sings this, Mary, did you know? Mary, did you know? Of course, Mary didn't know. Of course, Mary didn't know. Mary didn't know the shame and the misunderstandings that would follow her as her abdomen got bigger and bigger. Mary didn't know to see that one day when her son reached 30 years old, she will see the anguish, the pain, the suffering, the beatings and the crucifixion of her son on the cross. Did she know? No! Mary didn't know that this son that she bore would deliberately distance himself from her, not because he didn't love her, but because he has to surrender himself to a higher cause. Mary didn't know what Joseph's response would be to her, right? She didn't know. And Mary didn't know that every time she, she touched the face of her son, she touched the face of God, the great I am. She didn't know. And yet she said, Yes, Lord, I am the Lord's own slave. Can I encourage you again? In the last 40 days, God has burst something inside you. I don't know what it is. Seek God. Carry it. Whatever it is, is from God. God will see it through with you. Let me close. Do you know that these verses from 26 to 38 by itself is incomplete? You have to take it, and I don't have time, right until verse 56, because if you read verse 26 to verse 56 in the whole passage, then you see a complete whole. Why? Because after Mary, Mary has said, Be it unto me according to your word. Yes, Lord. What happened? From verse 39 to verse 45, you know what will happen? God will send like-minded people to encourage you. Like Elizabeth here. Mary went to see her sister Elizabeth. And even way before, they came together, there was social distancing, there was physical distancing, but you know something? There was a leaping of kindred spirits. The baby that Elizabeth was bearing, John the Baptist, leapt. And, and the spirit of Jesus that was in Mary's womb, leapt and together they synergized. God will send kindred spirits to you, my friend, to encourage you, to affirm you. And, and Elizabeth, bless Mary, you will be called blessed. You see, favour, ma. Blessedness will be unleashed. And because it is the favour of God, you will unleash blessings and blessedness. Whoa, through you, many will be blessed and you will utter words of blessing. And to complete this, from verse 46 to verse 56, we call it a Magnificat. It's like the culmination of a symphony. It rises to a crescendo because you're walking in the ways of God, you see. And Mary sang the Magnificat. What is the Magnificat? The Magnificat is a song to magnify the magnificence of a mighty God. I tell you, my, my friend, if you walk in the ways of God, you will sing your own Magnificat, you know. Every day of your life, you will sing a new song to God and you look at the Magnificat, it glorifies God, the Mighty One, His mercy, He has performed mighty deeds, He has brought down rulers and kings, oh, He has filled the poor and the hungry with good things. Whoa! You will magnify the Lord, magnify the Lord for the rest of your days. I think it was William Barclay who says this about the Magnificat. There is loveliness in the Magnificat, but in that loveliness, there is dynamite you will experience a heightened sense of knowing God. And your knowing of God will reach another level. You know, Mary, as she sang this song, was not concerned about the public humiliation before her, but no, she was so overwhelmed by the greatness, the majesty, 
and the goodness of God. It will be the same for you, my friend. Let's continue. Wherever God has taken us in the last 40 days, don't stop. Journey with the Lord. Journey with Him. Because whatever it is that God has planted inside you, nurture it. Hallelujah. Let me pray. Let me pray. Father God, I want to believe that you have planted so many dreams, so many desires, so many promptings, so many urge and, and, and desire to inside so many hearts, so many lives and so many spirits in the last 40 days, a desire to, to draw closer to you, a desire, Lord, to do something to honour you, a desire, Lord, that, that this vision that you've given to us is from you and we will take confidence and affirmation that what you have started truly lord you will complete father you will complete and we know that we have been changed for the better we have grown deeper more intimate with you lord father i want to pray that you will enable us by the strength and the help and the guidance of the holy spirit that this something that you have birthed inside us this desire will not stop and will not abort prematurely but it will be nurtured it will be developed it will be cradled it will be carried it will gestate into something full term and when it is birth father father let it be for your glory let it be for your glory lord and maybe sing a new song to you for the rest of our days a magnificat to magnify the magnificence of an awesome, mighty God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord, shall we do that? As we close these 40 days with uh, a song declaring the greatness and the goodness of God. And Sean Quack will lead us now to worship the Lord together. God bless you. I love you, Lord, for your mercies never failed me, and all my days I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God All my life All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am made oh I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice I love your voice you have led me through the fire in darkest night you are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend And I have lived in the goodness of God All my life All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God All my life And all my life you have been faithful All my life you have been 
Of the goodness of God, oh, I will see of the goodness of God. 